Hello, it's Thursday. I've recently realized a lot of you might be new here. Welcome. This is Complicated Knots, and I put out a new video every Thursday. My sheep isn't here. I found them. Okay, found the sheep. So this week's pattern is a sheep. Specifically, a sheep in a shirt. Okay, let's get into it. Whoa, that's a lot of eyes. So this is what I'm looking at right now, and I think it might be time to pack some of these guys away, because I'm feeling a little bit outnumbered. <laughs> okay, so here's a better look at the lamb we'll be making today. The construction for this one here is very loop intensive, so be prepared for that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start by making the head. We will then make a pair of ears. We'll then make the body, which is all one piece for both the shirt and the fuzzy butt. We're then going to move on to the front legs which are made in four distinct stripes. So we'll have the shoe at the bottom, we'll have a little bit of leg, we'll have one round of fuzzy wool stuff, and then we'll have the shirt. And then the back legs are a little bit easier, and they are just a shoe and leg. And then we'll finish it all off with a little lamb's tail. Okay, so to make your lamb, you're going to need eight ply 100% acrylic in three different colors. So I have a sort of a skin tone, which I'll use for the face, the ears and the legs. So I've got a soft cream there. Uh, I have some white to make her wool. And I've picked this sort of soft sea foam green kind of color. It's one of my favorite colors, but it never seems to register on camera properly. And I'm going to make a little green sister for my pink sheep. And we use that for the shoes, for the shirt and for like any little bows you want to attach as well. Now, you guys will be extra proud of me today because on the screen right now is the weights of how much of each color you're going to need. It only took me, what, 34 videos, but I did it. I remembered to weigh my yarn. So there are those. And you'll also need your 3.5 millimeter hook. You're going to need your pins and needles. You're going to need some stuffing. You will also need a small amount of black to stitch on a face. So you're also going to need a pair of 21 millimeter safety eyes. Now these ones here are a little bit boring, so I'm just going to fix them up real quick. There we go. But that's it. All right, let's get into it. So in the spirit of remembering to do things that I forgot to do in the last video, I am going to show you how I get that center pull and I'm actually going to film it this time. So remove the paper sleeve and pop it to one side, turn it on its end and give it a pat down. And then we're just going to feel around in here. I give it a little stir. It might take you a couple of tries and then you just give that a pull uh -huh. and you'll get a little bit of yarn vomit but it shouldn't be too bad and then you can just sort of like squeeze it back into its tube shape tuck any sort of extra bits in that you can tuck its paper sleeve back on and you've got a center pull to work from this one here actually put up a real fight but it also didn't vomit very much in the end so you know it's a kind of a trade-off i guess okay so as i mentioned we're going to start with the head and we're going to start by doing the face, which is worked up as this little ice cream cone type shape. We're going to start at the end of the nose and work in a continuous spiral until we reach the line where we want our wool to start. And we're going to work that up in our face color to start with. Okay, so that's the end of row 10. And now what we're going to be doing is swapping to our white and we'll be starting to work up the woolly texture. So what's really important to know about this pattern is that we'll be working in front loops and back loops. Just a quick rundown. When you look at a stitch, you can see that we have two loops available to us. And most normal stitches are worked through both of them at the same time. But we can also choose just to work through one or through the other. So a front loop is the loop that is on the outside or nice side of your piece. So whichever side is going to be visible, that is your front. And so that is the front loop. And the back loop is always on the inside of the piece or the wrong side of the piece if you're just working flat. So we've got our front loops and our back loops. Now the way this wool is worked is we work around once in all the front loops and then we work around the same row again in the back loops to build up some foundation stitches. So the woolly bits are worked in the front loops and then the foundation is worked in the back loops. So I'm going to swap to my white now like so. And working in the front loops, I'm going to put an increase three, which is just three single crochet into this front loop here. Just like that. And you can see that we still have that back loop that hasn't been worked in sitting behind. I'm then going to slip stitch in the next stitch. 
and I'm going to repeat that pattern the whole way around in the front loops. So for a total of 12 times, this is the first time, I'll be putting three single crochet in one stitch and then slip stitching in the next. So that's row 11A done, and now we want to do row 11B. Now row 11B is worked in the back loops from row 10, which are these ones sitting behind our, our sheepy floops. And the first stitch we want to work into is the back loop of that first little three stitch stitch. So right there. And I'm going to work the entirety of row 11B in those back loops around. Now, as we continue to work on, sometimes that first stitch becomes really hard to spot. So do use a stitch marker if you think you're going to have trouble with it uh, and just make sure that you mark off the back loop of the first stitch in the row, just so that you always know the first stitch you're supposed to work into. Okay, so that's the end of row 10. And just because I've abruptly realized I'm working all in white and I like you guys, <laughs> I'm gonna bring out some backing card just so you can see us a little better. So for the next row, I'll show you what I meant with the, the stitch marker. Now you can also just use a spare piece of yarn for this, but I happen to have one of my little clippy ones here. So, so I'll be using that. Uh, so the next stitch, you'll see that you've got this one little stitch that looks like it's crossing over. That's your first stitch in row 12A. So row 12A will be working in just the front loops again and we'll be working 15 of those little bubble things around again, which is an increase three and then a slip stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my stitch marker in the back loop of that stitch because I know it's the first one in the round. Then I'm gonna work my petals. I'm gonna call them petals, guys. Uh, my petals around in the front loops. So three single crochet in the first one and then a slip stitch. And repeating that around, like I said, 15 times. Okay, so that's the end of row 12A, and always make it a point to make sure you have the right number of frills at the end of each row, because sometimes there is just like a sneaky one that doesn't look like it'll fit, but it, it goes there. So now I'm gonna work row 12B, and because I marked the back loop of that stitch, I know that it needs to go right there, whereas like otherwise, if you look at this, it could be a, a little confusing as to whether or not it's supposed to be here or there, or but we know that it definitely, definitely, definitely goes there because we used our stitch marker. So now I'll be working row 12B around. Okay, so there are the first two rows of our woolly frills. We are going to be continuing that for five more sort of pairs of rows. But for now, we're just going to stop for a moment and we're going to attach our eyes. So the starting and the end point of the row will leave this very slight visible seam if you're looking for it. But basically you can see there's like this is very slight overlap and I try to keep that at the bottom of my sheep, which means that this is the top. So your eyes go into row eight with about five visible stitches between them. And you'll note that the back end of the eye tucks up pretty closely with that first row of, of curly woolly bits. I'm just going to snap those into place now. Okay, so now we're just going to continue stitching the head. Stuff. Okay, so we've just finished row 16B. So now we just have row 17 and the finish off to go. And it can be very tight to work in this little space. So I'm going to show it in real time just to, so you can see how I do it. And then you can decide because you could really just finish off at this point and you'll have a little bald spot at the back of your head and you wouldn't really be able to notice it. But I like to like carry my frilly loops all the way into the middle. So with six stitches remaining, still working in just the front loops, I'm going to do three of my little woolly frilly bits around. One. Two. Three. 
three. Then the final slip stitch. And then I'm actually going to finish off and I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail. Because you'll see that we still have a little bit of a hole in there. And what I'm going to do is using my hook, I'm going to take the tail and I'm going to weave it through each one of the remaining back loops and there should be six of them. Just like that. I'm going to give it a little pull and you'll see that there's no hole there anymore. And then we can just tuck the remainder of that tail inside the sheep's head. Give it a little fluff and you'll see that our little curly bits go all the way to the middle now. So that is the start of our head. You'll notice that our eyes are very wide apart at this point in time and we are going to do a little bit of an indentation to pull them around to the front of the head. But we will do that when we attach the ears, which we are going to make in part two. So I'm going to pop that to one side. So next up we're going to make the ears. Now the ears are actually worked in a little bit of a different way. So they're worked up as a disc type shape, working from the inside out, and then we fold them over and we stitch two of the sides together. So you see the starting point of each of the ears is actually in the middle back. And then we sort of stitch them together to form our little, little cone shape. And we are going to make those using our body color. So we're going to start by working up the first four rows. Okay, so that's the end of row four and we should be up to 18 stitches around. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my ear. And so we've got, this is where we put our last stitch and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this eighth stitch. I'm going to fold that up just like that. So that's that eighth stitch we counted to. And now we're going to insert the hook through the seventh stitch from hook and the first stitch next to the hook. Just like that. And I'm going to slip stitch through them like so. And then you can see that there are two other pairs of stitches that I'm going to do that. Oh, sorry, I think the hook was annoyed. There are two other pairs of stitches that I'm going to do that too. So that's that done. And I'm going to finish this off. And I'll weave this tail end in as well. And now when we flatten it, you could flatten it so that it's completely equal. But what I do is I just slide it up a little bit. And we flatten it that way so that we can see more of the opening. And then that will attach to the head somewhere around there as a little ear. So now we have one, we just need another. Ta-da! That is part two complete. Moving on to part three, we actually start at the butt and we work our way forwards. So we're starting by making the woolly texture and then about halfway through we swap to making the t-shirt that she's wearing where we put a lot of our decreases on just the one side to sort of slope the abdomen up to to our little neck point here. So we're going to start with our wool color and we'll be working in alternating front loop back loop rows again like we did with the head. Okay so that is the end of row 8b so we've done our last row of 30 single crochet around. Lovely sort of spiral frilly pattern happening and that is actually our sheep butt in its entirety even though it might look a little bit flat at the moment. Okay, so at this point we're just going to swap to our shirt colour and our next row is going to be worked as front post stitches. So what that means is we're going to insert our hook around the post of the stitch from the front. So the first one might be a little bit tricky. See, I've inserted the hook through to the back and then back around that post and I'm just going to complete that stitch. Now I'm just going to complete a round of 30 of those. So now for the next row, which will be row 10, we are actually going to back post around. So front post is inserting your hook from the front of the piece. Back post is inserting your hook from around the back of the piece. Just like that. And once again, I'm just going to continue and do 30 stitches around. Now the reason we're doing that, even though it might seem unnecessarily punitive, is it does give us this really hard edge to the edge of the shirt. And I'll show you on this one here where, you, where it looks like the shirt itself has a bit of a hem. I honestly think it helps um, make it look a little less like she's just been shorn. 
<laughs> so it looks like a little bit more like she's wearing wearing something as opposed to naked. So just like that. From here on out we'll just be working through both loops the way you would be used to stitching. There's nothing more fancy going on. So we'll be working the next eight rows just finishing off this little shirt blob. One thing I will mention is after working in either front or back post I do like to count backwards from my hook until I reach the right number of stitches just tell for absolute certain where my next stitch is supposed to be because sometimes it'll be here and sometimes it'll be here so I'll just count backwards and I can see that it's meant to be here like that. So now we are just going to finish off the rest of our rows. After row 17 we're going to stuff. And now we're just going to complete the final row and finish off. And there is our finished body. It looks vaguely acorn reminiscent. Um, you can see that it has sort of a flat top and a little bit of a slope underneath and then the head will become attached there. That's roughly where we attach the head. Okay so with part three complete now we move on to part four. So part four is the leg and the leg has four distinct stripes to it. So I'll bring in my demo sheep here. So we start off in our shirt color which I'm also using for her shoes and we work a couple of rows in that and then we work a couple of rows in her skin color same as the face and the ears so a couple of rows like that we then get our wool color and we work it's just two rows in the wool color to give us a little bit of a frill sticking out the end of the sleeve and then we swap to the t-shirt color and we finish off the rest of the arm so if you are ready for a whole bunch of color changes grab your shirt color and we will get started okay so we start with our shirt color We then swap to the leg colour. So next we're going to use our wool colour and we are going to do one row of front loop to get the little frill and then one row of back loop just to make sure the leg keeps growing. And finally we're going to swap to our shirt colour and we're going to finish off the leg. So stuff them fairly firmly about halfway and then leave the top part unstuffed. So there is our finished leg and you need two of those of course. Just going to pop those to one side. So now we're finished with part four. We're going to make part five which is just the back feet and they consist of the shoe and a couple of rows of the body colour and that's it. They're just a tiny little nub. Okay so there is our little back foot and once again we need two of them. I love being able to do that. <laughs> so there are our little back feet. Okay so that is part five done and now all we have remaining is a little tail. So the tail is a tube we start at the tip of it and we just basically work in a continuous spiral for a number of rows until we are at our desired length. And that is part six done. So now we have all of our pieces. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to indent our eyes a little bit. Now you don't have to do this step, but I like it. I do it on most of my creations. Um, I, I think it gives them a little bit more shape to their faces. So you, you may have seen me do this a couple of times before. Oh, little eyelid management there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just put a little stitch at the top corner of this eye. Just like that. Then I'm going to thread my needle through to the same point on the other side and pull and lock the whole thing in place with a stitch. 
Okay, so next up I'm going to stitch on a little face. And for that face, I'm going to opt for more of... I don't think I've shown you guys this yet. This is the first edition of The Little Lamb. <laughs> she came a long way. But uh, yeah, I'm going to opt for a face a little bit more this shape than this shape here. So we're going to go for more of the sort of flat nose, moving into sort of the double-lipped smile. So there we go. Notice that the whole face has been stitched on above where we started. So normally that would be like the center of the head, but the center of the face is actually further up than that, just because, uh, because of the angle of a sheep's face, I guess. Do you know why you're like this? Well, okay, fair enough. All right, so now I have a couple of ears that we're going to attach. All right, so with the head facing towards you, you want to go three curly rows back and directly above the eye and the ear gets attached just in there. So on the other side as well, three rows back above the eye, just like that. And now I'm going to sew them on. So that is our head assembled and now we are going to attach our body. So as mentioned before, we have a flat part on the top and then it slopes upwards a little bit. Doesn't really matter, but we are, I mean, we're all about the detail here, aren't we? And basically the head goes on top. So we will be sewing part of the skin tone as well as part of the wool onto the body. So that's where the head goes. And next I'm going to pin in place my two little fancy french fries here. Okay, so as you know, we stuffed the bottom part of these very firmly and we didn't stuff the top part at all. And you just position them one on each side. Okay, and then you've got your back feet, which we haven't stuffed at all. And they get positioned one frill row backwards and you position them basically over the top of that second frill. You see how I've stitched it down on either side? That's what we're going to do with these ones as well. Just doing a stability check. And I'm sorry if you can hear my fan clicking, it's like 35 degrees in here today. And the answer is stable enough, and aren't we all? So I'm going to sew all these pieces on now. So for the, so for half the head and for the back legs, I am going to use a little bit of white to sew them on. I'm going to sew the front half of the face on using the body colour and I'm going to sew each of these front legs on using the t-shirt colour. We're just going to do that now. Okay, so I've given everything the tug test and everything is firmly attached. So last but not least, we have to attach a tail. So as you can see here, we attach the tail in the centre and we attach it four rows of frilly bits back. One, two, three and four. And we sew it on. All right, so there she is with all of her pieces sewn on. And now, if you like, you can just... um pimp her out with a couple of little bow details. Okay, so here is our finished sheep. I'm actually itching to make a black sheep version, just like with like a little hot pink mohawk and like a shaved half of the head. But anyway, anyway, focusing. So a written version of this pattern has been sent out to my patrons and is available in my store. I will link to both down below. Like if you liked it, comment if you've got something to say, subscribe, and I'll see you next week. I have a lot of sheep here now. Let's see, there's one, two, three. Meh. <laughs>